We're here at Nick of the Woods with Dave Eavesdrop. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thanks, man. Good to be here. Cool. Um, so can you give me a brief history of your career in drum and bass? Well, taking it pretty far back when we started, I probably got into drum and bass when I was around about 14, 15 years old. Nice. Um, first sort of heard the jungle drum and bass music uh, on BFM. Uh, uh, DJ here in Auckland, 48 Sonic. I right, uh, yep. used to do a radio show uh, on Sunday nights and uh, showcasing kind of the jungle music. Back then it was pretty um, pretty new nice. and um, yep. people were just kind of starting to get into it. It was a very sort of small, there was a Thursday night scene here and uh, I used to jump on the bus on Thursday night from school and head to the breaks here in um, K Road. <laughs> nice. And that was kind of the beginning of it for me. Um, but, you know, just kind of started going out as a, as a party kid uh, and then as I kind of got to my late teens, I started uh, playing music with my friends, DJing, started buying records from BPM and from re- local record stores. And uh, yeah, progressed into sort of producing around about the age of 20. Cool. Uh, and uh, that was, yeah, that was kind of where it all began for me really, eh? Uh, so Dave, how has your sound uh, developed over the years? I kind of think my sound sort of developed probably as I've progressed in terms of my interest as well as probably my ability to write music as well as my engineering skills. Sure. Uh, I think as an electronic producer there's kind of three parts to your music progression um, in terms of your development, your personal development. Uh, I think it's you know obviously your maturity in terms of what you like and what you're influenced by. Uh, also your ability to compose uh, and then uh, you know arrange and then further to that probably your, your ability to engineer. Um, with, with writing electronic music there's a big emphasis on it being really loud, full and clear. Sure. And yes. I think that all of those things kind of combined really kind of add to that. So I think for me in the early days I really liked the darker edge drum and bass so a lot of the stuff that I was writing was probably predominantly that. Sure. Not as much musicality, mm-hmm. uh, probably more just emphasis on the bass sounds, the dirtiness. Right. Uh, I, I guess as I got older and I kept writing I think I, I got sort of more interested in more of the melodies and the musicality side of things so nice. I think that's why I've sort of settled on predominantly more of a liquid drum and bass sound which is mostly sort of jazzy and soul cool. uh, with uh, a lot of chords and, and strings and that kind of structure as opposed to the, the more kind of straight edged but heavier bass notes and stuff like that. So um, what is your writing process when approaching uh, writing new material? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I guess it differs. Uh, generally I'll start with, um, nowadays I'll start more with writing a set of chords. Sure. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm, there's, there's two kinds of schools of thought here, you know, a lot of musicians or electronic producers spend a lot of time sampling. Right. So they'll find something that they really like, they'll be digging through old records or, or online to find something unique. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've done a bit of that, but predominantly I, I tend to write chords from scratch, so nice. a lot of MIDI based. Uh, stuff to start with so uh, either with uh, a drum loop and then start working around with chords on top of that or um, just with chords and then kind of building up the string sections and the melodies and then sort of putting maybe a sample break right, uh, right. or drum break over the top of it. So Dave we're going to check out a video that you collaborated with Kashir on called Clearwater. Um, it's got a really interesting uh, music video. Can you tell me a little bit of, about the story behind that music video? Yeah, so that music video was shot in Japan. Cool. Um, at the time, Kashir and her husband were living in Japan. Uh, I wrote the song, sent it out to her. She wrote the lyrics, sent them back. So it was definitely like a, a collaboration across, the, you know, across the divide. Cool. Uh, and then later on, before they came and returned back to New Zealand, we thought it would be a great idea to shoot a video in Tokyo. I didn't actually go out for the shoot. We did it all online. We skyped. We decided what we were going to shoot. Uh, they had a good camera, so they went out and shot over a 24-hour period. Uh, and then shot all, you know, shot everything that we kind of shot listed, um, and then, you know, sent it all back, and we got a local editor to to bring it all together, and he did a really good job. So we were quite happy with the result. Well, thanks, Dave, for coming on Push Play and sharing a little bit about what you've been up to. Cool, man. You're totally welcome. Thanks for having me. No problem. So now we're going to check out Clear Water, featuring Kashia, shot in Tokyo. Boom. To view the full episodes, check out Push Play Music TV on dailymotion.com or premiereproductions.co.nz. Tune in to Push Play Music TV at 9pm on Tuesdays.